A collaboration between Canadian Blood Services and the volunteer-run Sick Nation recently turned 200 people into new donors. Vicky Mochama is TBO's new diversity journalist, and she went out to find why such clinics matter. Welcome. Thank you. All right, so Sick Nation and Canadian Blood Services have teamed up for many years, uh, but lately there's been a notable increase uh, in people giving blood. Tell us the story behind that. So Canadian Blood Services overall has had challenges with getting people to donate blood over the course of the pandemic. They have something like a 31,000 person shortfall. But there are these pockets where people are really interested in donating blood, and Sick Nation's efforts is one of those. So you see the sick community turning out in droves to donate blood. So at the blood drive in Brampton that I went to, they filled up all their slots, and whoever was deferred was then given an appointment to donate plasma, plasma or sick or stem cells or something else, but they really, their events, they turn out people and they get blood donations that they're looking for. All right. I'm not asking you to be a hematologist here, but in your article, you did speak to one. Break it down for me, the basics of, of blood types. Think of your blood cell, your red blood cell, as a saucer. And on the saucer, there sits these little elements on the edge of each one. Some of them are antigens, some of them are proteins. The antigens are what define your blood type. So you have A, AB, B and O. And then there's proteins called the Rh factor, the rhesus factor, that also sit on your blood type that gives you Rh negative or Rh positive, and that's an inherited trait in your blood. But there are also other antigens or proteins that sit on, the, on that blood cell, around that saucer, that shape what blood really is. So blood in general doesn't see race, but blood is geographically constructed, which is really interesting. So people who are from China are more likely to be O positive or O negative and have different proteins in their blood and different uh, antigens in their blood cells. And so it's an interesting question of how blood cells can become racially constructed or racial ideas. Very interesting. Now, now that we know that, why is specialized blood matching important? Specialized blood matching can be really, really important for people who have rare blood disorders or rare blood in general. So some people have just rare blood. And if you're going to get a blood transfusion, you need blood that matches up with yours or that one that your body will accept. Because if you think about it, you're already sick. And if you get the wrong type of blood, your body is now fighting something else in addition to what you're already dealing with. And so this can be a huge uh, co concern for diseases like thalassemia or sickle cell disease, where those blood types need specific blood. If you have sickle cell, for example, you're probably getting on average 20 to 25 blood transfusions per year. So you need very specific blood uh, to be given to you. All right. So people who have donated probably know that they have to go through a number of questions and questionnaires and it sometimes takes longer to fill out those questions than to actually donate blood. I'm hoping you can break this down. What are some medical barriers to blood donation? There's, you know, there's the obvious ones. Health is a big one. Is it good for you specifically to donate blood? For some people, if they donate blood, they, you know, they might like lack iron and that might lead to them fainting. So they might be turned away for being anemic. Age is a big factor. You have to be over the age of 17. You can't have alcohol in your bloodstream. These are things that are, you know, fairly standard, but there's a big long list of them. Those are some of the barriers to donating blood. But there are also other barriers that are more um, geographic or rule-based according to Canadian Blood Service's own eligibility rules. So if you've ever had malaria, you receive a lifetime deferral. And a deferral is basically what Canadian Blood Services means when they say, we'll never take your blood. And this is, you know, becomes a problem for people who are from uh, places in Africa where they've gotten malaria. Now, malaria doesn't necessarily stay in the blood for your entire lifetime, but according to Canadian Blood Services rules, if you've ever had malaria, you cannot donate blood. That's it. That's it. Hmm. Okay, so not everyone has, let's talk about access to blood clinics. That's another, another part that you talk about in your, in your story. How is that barrier being overcome right now? Well, Canadian Blood Services is obviously doing its best efforts to find partners like Sick Nation who can get them deep within the community and get them to places where people need. But I also talked to a truck driver um, at the blood drive who said that, you know, he donates blood, but his staff that, that work at his truck, trucking company can't necessarily make it out to the blood drive, even if they happen on weekends, because they are driving all day, every day, every single day of the week. And so one of the challenges is really getting the blood clinics to where people are at. And so it's an ongoing question of how do you get the most diverse blood pool possible in a really challenging time where people have different schedules and different needs. 
All right, so the blood drives in November organized by a sick nation actually marks a specific memory. What is that? It's the 1984 Sikh genocide, and it's a massacre that happened in across India after the assassination of Indira Gandhi, and Sikh people were effectively blamed for the assassination, and so thousands of Sikh people died. And as I spoke, spoke to one of the organizers, you know, for him it really comes full circle to be organizing a blood drive because he feels that you know, sick people's blood was shed, and as a result, the best that they can do to ma raise awareness of the genocide is to then give back blood. And, that, and he, for him, that's, he says it's squarely within his sick values and his Canadian values. Uh, last question to you. Of course, there's about 15 uh, of these drives being planned for this month. Um, is this, where can we find more information on where people can actually go donate blood? You can go to the Canadian Blood Services website and there's lots of locations. Some of them are permanent, some of them are temporary. There's lots of places to donate blood. But if you want to see what it's like with the Sick Nation Drive, they have their own website and you can go to the, uh, Sick Nation and they have blood drives across the country as well. So that if you're not necessarily in Ontario, you can donate blood across the country. All right, Vicki, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.